The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate your garage and proud of us out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 147, NASDAQ up 48, S&P's up 16 and a half, gold down $8, trading at $14.89 an ounce. You get silver's out in $0.18, $17.53 an ounce. Light sweet crude off $0.45, $53.15 a barrel. Notes and bonds, you get the 10-year down one tick, 130.06, 30-year off seven at 160.29, and king dollar, king dollar up 138 ticks, trade 98.592. We get the euro at 109, the yen is at 108.47, and the pound is at 126 to 1 U.S. dollar. And banks kicking it off. They sure are, man. J.P. Morgan leading the pack as usual. Yeah, and if we go take a look at this, it's going to get really interesting, man. They're, they're, they're big numbers. There's no, there's no the J.P. Um, JP um, $30 billion in 90 days. Yeah. Not it's bad. Right? It's a big number. It's a monster number. It sure is. And so if we take a look at this, you know, put this, this, this is right at the top of the range, folks. So this is going to be pretty wild. I think if we were looking at this yesterday, it's like three years, right? Two years. What year is that? March of, two, of yeah, 2018. About two years. So yeah, we'll Not see. quite, but some of the indices, yeah. yeah. We'll see whether they can make it or break it. That's, yeah. that's where we're at. You know, bottom line is that the first time you were up here was March of 2018. Couldn't handle it. Next, Then, you, you know, you went low. The next time you were up here was uh, September of 2018. Couldn't handle it. Next time... May of 2018, or 19, 19 yep. and then you had a big uh, September. Yeah. You know, you yeah. get up to that 120. September 40. 13th, yeah, yeah, that week. Goldman, just the, uh, the, the no traction here. Yeah, and, down about three, three and a half percent right now. You know, we, we take a look at Goldman, you're going to see a different chart here. Bring this back, same way. Man, well, quite different, huh? Oh, that's Pretty for amazing, sure. Actually. Yeah. So Goldman, you know, topped out uh, March of uh, 2018, 275 here at yeah. 199. Yeah. That's a different animal altogether. Oh, man, big time. Citigroup. Let's go take a look at Citigroup. Yep. I think they came out, too. I believe so. Flat. Yeah. So. Quite a rebound, though. They were under 69 bucks. They were a solid dollar under where we're trading at right now. Yeah, and that high was established uh, February of 2018, 80 bucks, 10 yeah. bucks underneath it. That's not bad. No, especially yeah. when you look at where they actually accelerated to at the end of last year, right? We were under $50 on that December. Look at that. That's yeah. crazy. 40, 48 bucks. Yeah. That was a heavy downdraft, man, of December. It there, sure was. No doubt Across about the board. That. Yeah. Gold. Gold contract. Let's take a look at gold out here. That's down 10 bucks right now, eight and a half dollars uh, It's going to need more volume to... You know, basically, really get whacked. But uh, bottom line is that 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 dollar is still hanging tough above the range. And if we go take a look at it, it only stayed under the range for one day <laughs> in the lower range. So you take a look at it. The number we're talking about, folks, is the ninety-eight three seventy-one. Okay. You know, it got there Friday, stayed there like, well, for the weekend. But then it doesn't trade in the weekend. So sure. tucked its head up above it yesterday. But today, what you have, you you know, you get some movement out here. So yeah. let's go take a look at the euro and see what is weak out here. Wait, euro's down a bit. The pound looks like it's still getting some juice underneath it. Eh, not not much, no. And then the yen, JPY. We take a look at the yen out here. Yeah, this is going to be dangerous to the metals market. We'll see what happens here. It, the this uh, 109.32, folks, is something you really want to watch because this thing's hanging up here. I mean, it's, you know, it's right next to this downdraft. Hasn't made it the last few times up here, but we'll see where the whole baby shakes out. So, earnings kick off. How uh, about Wells Fargo? Can we jump yeah, in? I absolutely. believe they had it as well. See where they're trading at this. One more time. You're going a little quick. For... Nope, we're going to, nope. WFC, Wells Fargo Corporation. Yeah, so kind of similar to uh, a lower trade on the open, but a rebound and actually in positive territory for the session. Wells Fargo, an animal of their own.
for what they've been dealing with, unlike any of the other banks, though, in terms of their woes, for sure. Oh, yeah. So it's down from 66. You're at yeah. 49. And I believe what they did before they get this new CEO in, it said that, yeah, it takes one more legal hit before the new CEO arrives. Okay. That's, that's good for the new CEO. I'd say so. Wells Fargo investors got a reminder that the bank hasn't passed its problems uh, as it seeks a new start. Look at this. The lender took a $1.6 billion expense for litigation tied to scandals of the retail bank. Hold on. Yeah. Dragging down the third quarter earnings by 35%. But look at this. They still made money. Yeah. I mean, imagine taking a $1.6 billion hit and one quarter. Right. And you still make money. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's, it's just the banking business is like smoke and mirrors and it's so much money. It's absolutely amazing. Let's go take a look at the GDX for one of our tigers out here. So uh, GDX. This baby, okay, so what you had, no, this is on Friday. We had some big volume on all these equities on Friday. You can see the GDX, 96 million shares. That's a problem. Uh, you're going into 75 million. You're going into the larger breakout, which is 125. But what, you'd want, what I'd want to see on the GDX out here today is, oh, well, this is good. It got to 2660. Okay, so we've got to 2658. And realistically, you'd like to see a rejection of lower price at that point. If you don't get it, you're going to get 2618 because 2618 would be how it jumped in this higher range. You know, that's what yeah. it looks like. Uh, and if we go take a look at the, I believe you still have, Barrick is one of the largest weightings inside there. So that's down 28 cents. You get light volume, but you want to see Barrick reject 16 93. Well, actually, it looks like it's going to 1648. 1648's game here. Yeah, that's the we're breakout. right near that zone. Yeah, that's the breakout from the 18th of July. And if we go take a look at Newmont. Yeah. Well, New Newmont's trading flat. It's in better shape than uh, 3650. We're at 3780. Okay. You're looking yeah. at the bottom of that gap. Yeah. Yeah. It's all about how we came back to that breakout area. That's, that's what it, it comes down to. And then we got, uh, so this is, this is the kickoff. It looks like they're, they're pushing these S&Ps, man. You yeah, know? dial up 180 now. I believe it was up about 140 when what? we were coming into the 10 o'clock. Let's go inside there and see what we got. United Health with their earnings as well this morning. Yeah, they hadn't dug into that man. one, but right. they sure do. Look at that. Yeah. So you get United Health putting 105 positive points into the Dow. J.P. Morgan 19, Johnson Johnson 19. Uh, Goldman uh, is the big one on the way down. Now, yeah. This is a great example of the price weighted. We go over it many times, right? But so look at Goldman only pulling the indices down because Goldman, you know, 200, but down about 37 points, whereas you know, right. United Health up 105. And I wonder what the market cap of those two. Let's just see how they compare. Because um, I'm guessing that Goldman is quite a market cap. So you have United Health market cap of about 223 billion, and Goldman with a market cap of wow, only 74 billion. In my head, I, I view Goldman as a bigger company than 74 billion. Yeah, it blew, you my, know, it, right? blew, it blew my mind that, that United Health was actually 224 yeah, million. Yeah, that, that, I guess, healthcare, right? Yeah, but, uh, no, I can see it, but that's, it's like, wow. Where does J.P. Morgan? Yeah, there you go, 380 billion. Yeah. Quite a difference. Big numbers. Yes. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Earnings season is kicking off, folks. Come right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. The Dow. Dow is up 205. Nasdaq's up 62. S&Ps are up 21. And let's go over to WeWork because this is going to be uh, just a great lesson in pumping equities. And we'll see whether next year or two uh, what they can do. Yeah. Another another day, another WeWork story of their woes, man. So yesterday we were talking about, right, they basically had two options, it seemed like. Either a debt package led by J.B. Morgan or a bailout of some sorts by SoftBank, where SoftBank would take control. The company seems to be wanting, we'll see if they get that privilege, right. to pursue the debt package. Now, anytime, wouldn't you want, if you're the one running WeWork, to control WeWork? Oh, As no in the only other option oh, is you give SoftBank control, and then they probably come in, put their own people. Maybe they already are kind of trying to put their own people no, in there. but no doubt. So, this is talking about the debt package. May include $2 billion of notes with a 15% 15 percent 15%, coupon. folks. Pretty remarkable. Now, In um, this day and age. That's... Yeah. And, you know, with everything that's been going on about this company, it seems pretty appropriate because would you be loaning that company money at no. 8%, I wouldn't 9%? I would loan them at 15 And that's what they even say. We'll get <laughs> right. into the headlines saying, you right. know, that this might not even right. be enough with what's right. going on with this company. Um, but that's where, so the roughly $5 billion financing package led by J.P. Morgan is the company's preferred option rather than selling a controlling stake to SoftBank. They go into the fact that, notably, the financing may include at least $2 billion of unsecured payment in-kind notes with an unusually hefty 15% coupon. The deal may give the venture's top private shareholders a final chance to avoid having their stakes severely diluted. The proposed yield, nearly double what WeWork paid on its debut bond offering last year, underscores the skepticism among debt investors that the company will be able to stem its cash bleed and become profitable anytime soon. Right. Um, and that chart that you're looking at, folks, that's the chart of the bond at seven and seven, that big yep. seven and seven eighths. Uh, yeah. You know, went from, you know, 100 down to yep. 79. Anytime you issue debt, it starts at 100, right? They got a 7.78% coupon. There it is. They issued 669 million, 7.875. Those bonds now trading at about 79. 
You do the math, that pushes it to about a yield of 13.4. They should, have, they should double that. <laughs> <laughs> this one? The first time, yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. 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 So pretty remarkable. And, um, and then there's, there's the, there may be little appetite for a cash-burning business facing other headwinds, even with a bond yield over 10%, one right. analyst talking. That's kind of what we're saying. You know, I mean, who's going who's gonna to be um, dying to get their hands on that debt, even at 15%, when guess what? It seems like the market has pretty much stated that we don't believe that they're going to be profitable anytime soon. Right. And, you know, J J.P. Morgan is going to be working on it because they're already into the company as well as into Adam Newman for monster money. So yeah. it's got to be like, um, here it is right here. So lo look at this. The $2 billion of proposed unsecured debt may carry an additional sweetener for investors. Equity warrants designed so that investors could boost their return to around 30% if the company, if the company gets... A twenty billion dollar valuation, according to yeah. So you know, if it gets twenty, so like we don't. It's not saying what it is right now, but maybe it's ten. <laughs> right. I mean, that's what they were talking. Probably under ten was the speculation, really. Yeah. Um, you know, WeWork would only pay a third of the coupon in cash, while the rest of the interest would accumulate and become due at maturity. They're saying, so that's maybe to try and allow them to actually turn a profit. If you're paying that, you know, how are you going to do anything? That's right, if you're, to get out public again. Right. right. You know what I mean? It's, so it's, it's also going to include a billion of secure debt that would be sold to investors, as well as $1.7 in letters of credit that would be split among participating banks. Um, and J.P. Morgan's assistant reflects the combination of financial and reputational interests, as well as Diamond's mantra that the bank be there in good times and bad. Well... You know, when you, and that's the last yeah, sentence. They're, they're already on uh, the bank already is the lead lender on the 650 million revolver loan and a major lender to yeah. Newman. Um, <laughs> its funds are among WeWork's largest shareholders. So if we go like this, so what happened yesterday in the, when I was on the air in the afternoon, if we can find this one, they also what what they had to do. Maybe folks, just go into the WeWork again. Is, uh, they they have 2,600 phone booths. I saw that. Right. Uh, that have yeah. formaldehyde in them, folks. Yeah, formaldehyde. And bottom line is that they got to get rid of all of those inside of all the places. And yeah. Like, I guess that would be not a huge amount compared to what they're dealing with, but that is a monster amount. I yeah. Mean, that's, that's, you know. That's, Anytime we're talking about $5 billion in debt, though, it kind of dwarfs when you're just talking about 2,600 phone booths. They get, some, they get some problems. Oh, they get some problems. And then you start looking at, I mean, how much money have they raised, I believe, for venture capital? It's about $15, $16 billion they've raised for a company that's now worth only $10 billion. Right. So they've, they've gotten that much money. So the investors have given them 15 to 17 billion, whatever the number is, and they're only worth 10. Right. Well, we could start a company tomorrow, raise 16 billion dollars in cash, put right. it in our bank account, it'd be worth 16 billion. Right. <laughs> you know, like that's it. They got all that money, and they're worth it's, almost half of what the cash load is that they had. And that's why that the, the original investors, which is look like Benchmark and okay, and who else? Who else is in there? That's why they want that debt so sure, bad because. Sure. If the dilution comes in, you know, the dilution comes in, and then it's like, okay, yeah. now it's game on. And, uh, wow, man, it's, it's, a, it's a heavy scene. Oh, it there's, sure there's is. no doubt about it that. It sure is. Uh, some of the other higher volume equity out here. Let's take a look at it. And we'll see whether we get volume in this market today. Of course, yesterday was a uh, holiday, federal holiday. Yep. Um, Roku's got a bid up here. That's up 875. J.P. Okay. Morgan, we were talking about, that's up 290. Um Apple's up 99 cents. That's probably close to new high uh, again. So the 11, that's the new phone, right? Yes. Look at that. It's just hanging at highs, man. Not bad. Bottom line, that's, that's pretty intense, man. It's quite an uptrend. It really is. And let me just put this. So revenue-wise... Look at that moment. Yeah, I mean, they might be the biggest juggernaut. You put them, you put Walmart, right? Um, because these are companies that don't have the growth anymore, so they're not getting some crazy PE, so they're yeah. really valued off some hardcore revenue. Right. Um, we'll jump to Walmart if we could next, just because, I mean, they're taking in, what is it, 270, yeah, about $270 billion for the year, Apple is, and Walmart, because they're a staggering company. They are, and Walmart, uh, there you 514, go. 526, yeah. yeah. What Walmart, uh, they were, they confirmed it yesterday, uh, they got the, here it is right here. Yeah. They're in that race with Amazon, and they're yes. subsidizing uh, some of their retailers, which is unheard of almost. I mean, Walmart was always the ones that were squeezing everyone. Yeah. So what this is about is that hold on to your smartphone, the holiday price was the beginning between Walmart and Amazon. 
Walmart, the world's largest retailer, has introduced a program to temporarily lower the price consumers pay for some items on its marketplace site, where third-party vendors pay Walmart a fee to list the goods. The merchants on the site, the merchants selling on the site, however, will be paid the same amount that was listed before the cuts. So, yeah. So the war is on in a huge way, man. Yeah. And, and that can we? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was up. Oh. I was just going to mention the Amazon at the bottom of there, uh, because that is, I believe it was the price war with Amazon in terms of, so the move is a response to Amazon rolled out over the summer where e-commerce giant has full control of the set prices for third-party products sold in its marketplace in oh. return for a minimum payout. So Amazon's come under scrutiny for increasingly leaning on vendors to ensure the products aren't offered for a lower price on walmart.com or any I other see. rival weight. So they got a they got a battle going on there. 877-927-6648. Bank earnings are out. Earnings earnings season. We're going into holiday season. Halloween. We ought to go by Halloween. Not yet. Not yet, man. We got about two weeks. Two weeks to Halloween. Dow. Dow's up 207. Dow's up 63. S&P's up 22. We'll come right back. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights Day, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. We get some movement in this currency market, folks. 
So, uh, do they have some progress? That's what the headline says. We'll see if it comes out, right? So, EU UK negotiators said to be closing in on draft Brexit deal. UK and European Union negotiators in Brussels are closing in on a draft Brexit deal with optimism that there will be a breakthrough before the end of Tuesday. Two EU officials said that is today. Wow. Uh, any draft legal text that uh, will hinge on whether Prime Minister Boris Johnson believes he has the support of the UK Parliament with the backing of the North and Northern. Irish Democratic Unionist Party, crucial. Uh, very light on details there, yeah. but but nonetheless, to jump over to the pound, yeah, we're getting a spike as you might expect. So the market oh, yeah. market listening to that, and uh, if we could drill it down to really see the instant spike on that news as it was breaking just in the last few minutes, and there's your spike going from about 126.5, um, almost a solid point to 127.5, 127.38 yeah. right now sitting. And you get the euro did the same thing. So it's going to be intriguing because, of course, both of these have been in the you know dumps for a, quite some time. It, uh, That's no, the pound. The yeah. There you go. Not bad. Yeah, so we we're trading it from... like just under 110, right? To 110.30 yeah. on that spike. Yeah. So... We'll see how this baby shakes out, and then if we go over to the dollar, you're going to see just the opposite inside the dollar. Now, it's going to get sure. interesting is to see whether the dollar can get back under the range. And, you know, let's see. So we're dealing with 98.371. Oh, it just did it. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. this get it's going to get, get interesting, man. You know, I yeah. mean... It, that's the first time we've heard in a long time that anything is happening, right? Yeah, and again, light on the details, so we'll see. But you had two EU officials, the EU, kind of the ones that have been the harshest, saying, no, Dan, we're not going to do this. We're going to make concessions. If you actually have real EU officials saying, hey, we might have a breakthrough. We might get mm -hmm. something by the end of today. But as the, end of as, the, as the later part, the latter part of that update said, it all hinges on whether... They can get it through Parliament. Right. It seems like there's a lot left there, but, oh, yeah. but the market's saying maybe. There is. Let's go to Mark in Bedford, Mass. Mark, what's going on, brother? Not much, Tom. How are you? How, hi, Tommy. How are you? Good morning, we're Mark. Doing, we're doing good, man. And I'm sure you're doing great up there because this is a great time of oh, year. Oh, my God. What a gorgeous day. Sun's out. The trees are turning. It's one of those picture picture postcard days. It is. It's uh, what are the camp Chamber of Commerce days, right? Yeah, no doubt. Particularly, because you're, you're on the turn right now, right? This is the turn, really, like this week, last yep. week. Yeah, In right. the Boston area, we're just about to peak. Uh, Northern New England is peaked or past peaked. And okay. I guess if you go down to Rhode Island, there still may be some peaking left. But yeah. Yeah, the trees are all out. I, and I'm just looking out, out the window right now, and I see color all over the place. Ah, that's so Nature, cool. Nature's peak brush. Yep, in a big way. In a big way, yep. man. So I have a couple of questions. My first question is about the market, and that leads me to the TVIX. I don't mind to buy the TVIX. I keep biting my tongue because every time the market, I want to buy it, the market's going up. The TVIX is a bear, is a bear ETF. So um, I guess the two questions are related. Uh, do you think we'll ever go Will I ever come down? I know, Tom, you've been on the very <laughs> side, so. That's a, great, that's a great quote. Will the market ever come down? Um, you know, this is what happens. So let's, we can talk about the T-VIX for a second. The problem with the T-VIX, Mark, right, is this, is that, now, this, this, is, this vehicle here, folks, right, is trades at two times the VIX ETN. Okay, it, it says it two times the VIX in general. Okay, now the VIX in general, what ends up happening is that when this moves, most times you don't even have a chance to trade it because let, let's picture what happens here is that if we, we go to sleep tonight and we wake up tomorrow morning and the, and the futures, you know, are down 25 points, well, it's already moved. So that's why this vehicle, I mean, I, I can understand why people trade it because when you get it right, you know, it, 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 if you're in it the night, night before, you know, it's fast, furious, and you know it, all of the above. I mean, if we sure. if, if you go all the way back out here, May third, it was at nineteen dollars, and five days later, it was at thirty one. <laughs> right. You know, so I get it. The problem that it is, Mark, is that you know it's after the fact. You know what I'm saying? So right, exactly. You know, so I guess maybe the the real picture is 
is, you know, we have a, obviously a strong market today. So, Tom, what do you think? Are, are we ever, to coin the phrase, are we ever coming down or are we going to keep going up on maybe what appears to be somewhat light volume sometimes? Well, so today's a good day to, you know, so let's say you wait to the end of the day. So I have the spy up here right now, folks, okay? And, you know, what you had here is that last Friday you had a big day, no doubt. You had an expansion of volume, 101 million shares. Now, that wasn't big of volume that's going into, but you still got an expansion of volume. So the way that works inside time of the trade is that we're testing that right now, which is 298.74. That 101 million was going into your downdraft from October, which is only 89, as well as the bigger downdraft, though, which is the 142. So the way I look at markets is that what I, what I say is, that, okay, you, if you get over this today, which we are, and you close under it, that's a failure in price and volume. And you're still not at the highs. You know, you're very close, but that's the consol that would be a consolidation. If you close over this high today, whether you have volume or not, that is a shot going right to the very highs, which is the 302. Um, that's kind of so, how it's... So that, that would be a, an indication whether to maybe, and I know it's the word of maybe, buy the TVX or not buy the TVX? That's correct. Based, that's... Up, based upon how it closes? That's correct. And maybe buy, and maybe buy some shares in, in the post market? That's correct. Right. Or just, okay. you know, uh, close into the close, because that, that would be saying that, okay... And then what I would do, I would, I'd actually measure what is the percentage of lighter volume, if, in fact, we get that. But it looks like we will. You know, right now, you're into the market an hour and a half. We get 9.8 million. You're talking about 100 million. You know, uh, it doesn't mean you won't get it, but your probability is that you won't, you know, get, you'll probably get 70 Eight, yeah, you know, so, Friday was a big day with all the trade talks, right. with all the you know speculation right. of a deal, phase one, so forth. Yeah, and so Tom, think, are you, I, Tom, are you still bearish in the long run? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, you, well, this is what you have. You know, what we've really done, okay, and this is where we've been in a consolidation. I mean, it's a higher consolidation. You know, there's there's there's, there's no two ways about that. But when you bring this back, I mean, you know, we could bring that back. Where is that? Yeah, beginning of 18. Basically. That's January of 2018, and you're 286. You know what I mean? So it's like, okay, it's higher. There's no doubt we're 298. But realistically, you know, when you look at a long-term chart like this, it's like, okay, you know, to me, that there was still in this consolidation. Now, you can make the case that you are in a higher range for sure. You know, I mean, you know, it's like, okay, is it? And why would that point to a downturn though? Versus that was it. Does it or does it point to? Because that was the. It wouldn't part. turn to. Yeah, no. It's just. It's. I, I, I'm just saying that because I'm I got just, a high volume. I might agree, here. but I'm just saying you no. jump to it as to explain why you were bearish. Oh, because all these lows have high volume lows. Okay. And they had, you know, and they haven't. And then on top of that, here, just stay with us, Mark. Okay. Come right back. Okay. okay. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. 
From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's up 262. NASDAQ up 89. S&Ps are up 29 and a half. We're talking with Mark from Bedford, and we are talking about the uh, market in general. So, uh, you know, if we go over to just even take a look at this, even, even at the break there, Mark, okay, there's no doubt that they're running this baby. Uh, we'll see just how far they can do it. Now, the high of what they... That's Friday. The high of, yes, this is Friday right yes, here? Yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. It was 29.94, and so that we just got over that. Yeah. Um, that's going to be a number you want to keep your eye on right now, uh, because that's, you know, that's the number. Yeah, that's the number that we we're talking about where the test is coming in. Sure. And you know, to go into, I was talking about that consolidation. When you look at the, a couple of the high flyers, Netflix, that's already given it up. Uh, gave it up an FLX uh, in spades. You know, you have Netflix is one of the first ones to actually get close to that December uh, 2018 level on the way down. I mean, that, that number there was, uh, the high was 261, the low was 231, and we got to 252. So yeah. we actually got into it. Um, and okay, Vidi so, is another so I have a question on that. Yeah. So you mentioned we were, you, earlier in the show you were talking that Apple was up, I don't know what it is, not right this morning. All-time highs, that it yeah. was up almost, almost a dollar. But so Apple is doing the opposite of Netflix. Apple continues to remain strong while Netflix is down. So it does. You know, we, I, 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 I understand your assumption based upon Netflix, but Apple tends to run against that then. Yes, and so doesn't Google. I mean, they, you know, Google right now, you know, you're up $18, but when I look at Google, it, that, this Google... That uh, 1265 looks like it wants to get tested, man. Sure. You know, so you, you have the yin and the yang out here. There's, there's no doubt. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, this is a, you know, we came down hard on Google. You know, maybe it won't make it when it gets up there, but it looks like to me that it does want to test it because, see, when we had come down in May, it was vicious downdraft, right? 15 million. Went from 1289 to 1155. But then watch what happens. As we went up, you had 11 million versus the 15 million, but you still had good price movement from 11, 20 to 12, 55. Sure. And then this is the building cause. So this building cause looks to me like you're building cause pushing into that level. So yeah. it just looks to me like, you know, can, it wants to test it. Can, excuse me. Can we jump to Disney as well? Yeah. It's uh, with the likes of their new streaming product coming out, Disney Plus, and the, how they're going to combat Netflix. The two of those are going to be huge competitors. Maybe the chart's going to catch up eventually. Um, okay. I wanted to see here's, where that was in relation to its high. 
Tommy, the the indication about if you want to buy, if you think think this is going to be strong, is are you do you foresee what the birth rate is? You know, all the all the kids who want Disney for whatever reason. You know, all the Disney shows are going to be on there. Where Netflix is probably more tweet for a more mature audience, and so you have to look at almost what the demographics is going to be like if you're an investor and you're going to play this for a longer period of time. What is the invest what what is the demographics going to be of the U.S. who, who to see what the buying power of that of, of what the what the revenue stream of Disney is going to be? If you don't think we'll have a large younger audience, when I talk about younger, I'm talking about probably ten or twelve or, or and under sure. for a foreseeable future. Then Disney may not be, I think anyway, going. Going, um, going gangbusters, as opposed to Netflix, which is more tweaked for a more mature audience. I have Netflix, and I know, I know you guys do. Yeah. So, you know, we'll go from there. So, I see it being just more of a fundamental Disney. problem, regardless of birth rate. Where what is Netflix's brand of their content? Right, they have some great stuff. Ozarks is a show they're yeah. coming up with a new season. I love. Um, they got a bunch of great shows, but not when you compare it to the likes of Disney, man. Right. You and know what, ha what happens too, Mark, is that the Disney is a worldwide deal just you know so yeah, so true. picture you you get a young child right and there's no reason to leave disney <laughs> everybody knows mickey mouse yeah you everybody know, you knows stop, you stop Duck, with that right? and then you're going into star wars and yeah. you're going into everything else no, you know what i mean that's so, the reason why i pull it's, it up it's, it's, and, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a real true. number so i see yeah. netflix almost uh they're they're not in the likes of we work but they're having a reckoning right now in terms of trying to yeah. square how they have all these competitors coming online and for the first time, I think they're really going to start seeing some cancellations. And you might come back to Netflix. We've talked about it, right? Right. But it's not something you just ding up on the credit card, leave it there for years, not even worry about it. Because you're going to want to enjoy other streaming. Well, we it's... haven't even talked about Amazon. Right. I know. You know Amazon, you Amazon Prime. Amazon Prime, right? I know. I, I have a question on a very different subject. Tom, your afternoon show, your second hour, it is that now a repeat of your first hour? Yes, it is. Okay, so so you're basically One now hour live, in the afternoon. That's it. Um, nine yep. to four instead of nine to five. That's right. Okay. Why, why do you shorten the hour? You want to get to the beach sooner? You know, the bottom line: three hours a day for how many years? Who knows? It's a lot of time. There's only yeah, so much yeah. time in the day, um, as you know, yeah, Mark. You know. As I say, yesterday's gone, tomorrow's not here. What are you doing right now? You can't get time back. So, bottom line, it is what it is. Yeah, so. All right. Cooking, guys. Okay, well, thank man. you much. So, what's the weather like down there? It's, it's still a little hot. It it, is. It's, it's still a little hot. We, we, yesterday came down a little bit. Two or three more degrees will be really in good shape. We hope, we're hoping it's not like last year that, uh, you know, we got to the point of uh, Christmas before we really... Got some uh, cooler weather, so we don't want that to happen because. How how hot hot does it get like in July August? Is like are you like a it's over hundred every day? It's what happens is that it seems like August and September are the hottest, right? Yeah, and yeah. it's not that. I mean, the the temps in Nevada, right? They're yeah. one eighteen, yeah, something it's, insane. Yeah. It's usually 96, 97, 98, but it's our humidity that just is right. through the roof. So the feels like temperature when you combine them yeah. is pretty and, bananas. And the sun is very hot. You got to stay out of the sun. The sun um, is like what ha what does happen. Well, we're you know we all Tampa, St. Pete. This is all in the water. So what does happen, which is cool, is that at night. When the sun goes down, five degrees makes a huge difference here. Like, yeah. and the humidity you'd still is think it's really well. hot, but Tommy and I would say, "Oh, this is beautiful." <laughs> uh, right, right. You know? Do you get much of a sea breeze? Yeah, we do. We do. We do. It's, yeah. it's nice being yeah. on the other coast. Tom. Oh, it's yeah. huge. Yeah. Oh, it's huge, man. Yeah, it's huge. Cooking, brother. All right, cooking. Thanks, Mark. And enjoy the day. You too, man. Have a great one, man. Thank have you, a, guys. Have a safe Bye. one. The. Uh, so we'll see where this baby's going. You get uh, the Dow up 274. Yeah. Nasdaq up 86. S and P's up 31. What was pretty wild is that when that European news come across, it brought the currencies, the euro up, the pound up, the dollar down, and the S and P higher. Let's see which one. I was going to pull up the currencies. Yeah. So there's uh, the extension of them. You get the dollar now at 98.255. I think we initially had just dropped to about 98.4 on that. Yeah. Um, They're moving. 
And you got the euro spiking now to 110.39, and there's that pound at 127.62. Yeah, quite a number. There's no doubt. Let's go to Lou in Spokane. Hey, Lou, what's going on, brother? Hey, Tom and Tommy. Oh, here, stay right there. Morning, Get Lou. A quick break, Lou. We'll Morning. Come back, we'll talk about General Electric. GE. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Stay right there, folks. We're going to come right back with Lou. We're talking GE. GE right now is trading up six cents at $8.79. We're going to be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one mark timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Dow. Dow's up 293. Nasdaq's up 95. S&P's up 33. Dick, you're pushing it, man. It's going. It's not stopping. It. Let's go to our man, Lou, in Spokane. We're talking GE. So what are we looking at, Lou? Well, you, you know what, Tom and Tommy? <clears throat> oh, pardon me. <clears throat> I was referencing GE as uh, something that you guys had We've been talking about a couple weeks ago, and it, it what you said really impressed me. And I said, "Man, I got to get in on this." But what you said was, "When you cook the books, 
it really comes undone when it comes undone. And you probably know a lot more about GE. I, I, I thought GE was cooking the books in the 1990s myself, but you probably know a lot more than me. I don't, I don't know the technicals. But my point is the United States of America is cooking the books a lot more than GE ever thought about. So watch what happens here. So when you talk about when we shift from a, like a GE to either the banks or the government, well, they can print money forever. <laughs> so it's a little bit different. Do you know what I'm saying? Well, well I, Tom, I, they, can, I, they can print money, and they've been doing it all my lifetime. But when well, it comes undone, it comes undone, and you have an explosion of hyperinflation. I believe that's going to happen. Yeah. yeah, I think both sides, you yeah. know, I would say we agree that that problem, man, but it just doesn't stop. So we got to get it under control for it, sure. It, it doesn't stop, but it, it, it can't be brought under control. It, it's no, it's world, mathematically yeah, impossible. I understand that. Right. Well, okay. I don't think it's mathematically impossible. It, you got to you got to spend the, less the, the, or, or take in more. Off the books, yeah. it's closer that's to not mathematically good. impossible, to be fair. Okay. All right. That's a discussion for a longer day, yeah, Lou. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah. That's a good one. Take care, man. Stay right there, folks. We've okay, got Bigger Swim guys. coming up next. And I'm Mr. Basil Chapman, Steve Rhodes, Dave White. Be back this afternoon. Thanks, pal. Thanks, man. Bam! Look at him, folks.